Hello and welcome. You're watching Unplugged TV India. This is Alice Francis. Let's begin with today's top stories. Regular international flights in India to be operational from March 27. Five Indian students killed in road accident in Canada. India will finally begin vaccination drive for 12 to 14 age group from March 16. Former NSE CEO Chitra Ramakrishnan sent to 14-day judicial custody. No home-cooked food plea denied. Russia asked China for military and economy aid for its war in Ukraine. New guidelines to protect minors being drafted by China's online authority. Taiwanese personal computer maker Asus may evacuate Russia. Possibility of a North Korean ICBM test is approaching, says South Korean newspaper. Regular international flights will finally resume from March 27, said Union Civil Aviation Minister Jyotiraditya Sindhya, as the coronavirus situation in India has improved. Scheduled international flight services were discontinued in India on March 23, 2020, due to the emergency of COVID-19. Special international flights between India and roughly 35 other countries have been flying under an air bubble beginning July 2020. The minister also said that the Modi government held talks with the heads of Ukraine's neighbouring countries like Romania, Moldova, Slovakia and Poland and set up corridor for the evacuation of 18,000 Indian students from the war-hit country under the Operation Ganga. Five Indian students were killed in a road accident in Canada after their passenger van collided with a tractor-trailer on an Ontario highway in Canada on Saturday. The news was confirmed by the Indian High Commissioner Canada, Ajay Bisaria. The deceased were known as Harpreet Singh, Jaspinder Singh, Karanpal Singh, Mohit Chauhan and Pawan Kumar. According to the police, other two passengers were rushed to a nearby hospital with significant injuries as a result of the crash. In a major step in the fight against COVID-19, India will begin vaccinating children aged 12 to 14 years old on March 16 as part of an expansion of its COVID-19 immunization program. Apart from this, the centre will also be vaccinating all adults above 60 years of age with precaution doses starting from Wednesday. Health Minister Mansuk Mandavya said on Monday, the vaccination given to children for 12 to 13 year and 13 to 12 year age groups that includes those born in 2008, 2009 and 2010, which means who are already above 12 years of age of the population. The COVID-19 vaccine to be administered would be Cobivax, manufactured by Biological Evans Hyderabad. Meanwhile, comorbidity is no longer a requirement for patients aged 60 and up to receive a prophylactic dose. Booster injections are now available to everyone in that age group. Also, all those above 14 years of age are already vaccinated. A Delhi court on Monday remanded former National Stock Exchange Chief Chitra Ramakrishna to 14 days of judicial custody in the NSE co-location scam case. The CBI informed the court that Ramakrishna has been evading replies and not cooperating in the investigation. Also a plea for home-cooked food prayer book and a mask for Ramakrishna during the judicial custody has been rejected by the judge citing that she is not a VIP. The CBI produced Chitra who was apparently influenced by a Himalayan yogi to appoint Anand Subramanian as the group operating officer of NSE before the court as her seven-day custody expired on Monday. The probe agency had arrested Ramakrishna on March 6, a day after her anticipatory bail application was dismissed by the court. The case of Himalayan Yogi and the co-location one are different but involve the same characters. On the 18th day of Russia's so-called military operation in Ukraine, 
Here are few latest updates on the story. If reports are to be believed, then Russia has asked China for military and economic aid for its war in Ukraine. Beijing refused to directly address the reports, instead accusing the US of malicious spreading disinformation over China's role in the Ukraine war. A Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson said the US has been spreading disinformation targeting China on the Ukraine issue with malicious intentions. It is to be noted that China has declined to directly condemn Moscow for launching its invasion and has repeatedly blamed NATO's eastward expansion for worsening tensions between Russia and Ukraine. Meanwhile, diplomatic efforts to end the war in Ukraine are stepping up with Ukrainian and Russian negotiators set to talk again after both sides cited progress over the weekend. Ukraine reported airstrikes on an airport in the west, heavy shelling on Chernivyv northeast the capital and attacks on the southern town of Mykolaiv. More than 2,500 residents of the Black Sea port city of Mariupol have been killed since Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24. United Nations Refugee Agency UNHCR reported that nearly 2.7 million people had fled Ukraine as of Saturday while nearly 1.7 million of them heading to Poland. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Monday urged NATO to impose a no-fly zone over his country. He warned that its member stated would soon be attacked by Russian forces after an airstrike hit a Ukrainian military base close to the Polish border. After a Ukraine minister asked to leave the nation, Taiwanese personal computer maker Asus will evaluate its image and put in place a strategy to evacuate its staff and business in Russia, Taiwan's economy minister said on Monday. Ukraine's deputy prime minister and minister of digital transformation, Mikhailo Fedorov, wrote an open letter to Asus chairman Johnny Xi on Thursday, urging the company to stop doing business in Russia in what the Russian government refers to as a special operation. Moscow has invaded Ukraine. Asus, Russians have no more right to use your brilliant technology. It's for peace, not for war, Fedorov added in a separate tweet. Meanwhile, new guidelines to protect minors being drafted by China's online authority have been issued. According to drought regulations released on Monday by China's cyberspace administration companies, engaging an online game, live streaming, audio and video shall put up a youth mode to protect minors. Large platforms should conduct frequent assessments on cyber protection for kids in order to offer a clean online environment for them as well as set daily spending limits for minor users. Tencent Video and IQIYII, two of China's most popular video streaming sites, as well as ByteDance, own short video platform Douyin, have already created a youth mode for minors. According to a local media, the South Korean government believes North Korea could test an intercontinental ballistic missile as soon as this week. Tensions on the Korean Peninsula have been escalating as indicators have emerged that Pyongyang may soon carry out its vow to resume nuclear tests, breaking a self-imposed moratorium that began 2017. According to the Cho Su Ibu newspaper, the office of outgoing President Moon Jae in informed president-elect Yoon Shu Yul that a test launch was approaching and that it would not be surprising if it occurred on Monday. Thank you for watching Unplugged TV India. This is Alice Francis. Please hit like, subscribe and share. If you wish to see more videos like this, please do, please do comment below.